Jeez. See, that's a little cute there. Ah, hey, hey. Well, guess we should probably talk about this, huh? To preface what I'm about to say, this is not a review of Untitled Goose Game. I find the game to be quite charming in a way. I like the way that the game has you interact with the world, think the world itself has a fair amount of polish and attention to detail. I enjoy the puzzle solving aspect, admire the simple yet detailed cell shaded art style, and like the way that the soundtrack interacts with the game. That being said, I am using Untitled Goose Game as a framing device for a wider conversation, and I will be spoiling a few of the tasks on the Goose's to-do list, both in premise and in solution. If you're not on board for that, it'd be best to abandon ship right now. Still here? Great. Alright, so, games in film or theater are very different. This seems like a rather obvious statement, but as with a great many things that I talk about on this show, uh, we don't really appreciate how different they are until we begin discussing them. In film and theater, the audience is a passive observer. In video games, however, we are frequently asked to become an actor in the story as well. The act of play, what the game asks you to do, and what the game allows you to do are all part of the content of the game. In Untitled Goose Game, we are asked to play the role of a goose. But this isn't just floating in a pond and quacking, it is asking us to take on a very particular archetype of goose. The horrible goose. The asshole. It does this framing of being a horrible goose to ask you to do a series of mischievous deeds that frequently require creative solutions to achieve. These tasks are all framed as being a nuisance at best. It's almost like a point-and-click adventure game in a way. As such, the game is quite literally a role-playing game but not in the same sense as Skyrim, Fallout, Final Fantasy, or anything else that we might give that term. We, as the player, have been tasked with acting in the stage of the game, and given particular tasks in the effort of replicating this role. As people, we do this all the time. Actors do it on film and on stage frequently, and tabletop RPG players will often play like this. Uh, but. All of these examples are slightly different than when a game asks you to do it. The game can't really judge if you're acting generically uh, in a specific way, but it can judge specific actions and categorize them to be acting in the direction of a role. A game like Fallout or Skyrim gives you space to pick a role for yourself and act accordingly. Sometimes, such as with morality systems or Fallout New Vegas' faction reputation tracking system, specific actions are judged to be part of a specific archetype. And there is so much content that you can decline the jobs that you'd rather not act on. The fact that you're given only two archetypes that are rated against in a binary morality system notwithstanding. Anyway, Untitled Goose Game, on the other hand, gives you a list of things that you must achieve in order to fulfill the developer's vision of what a specific horrible goose does in an idyllic small town. You're encouraged to fulfill this role through your tasks, but you can only choose one task to ignore. If you wish to progress, you have to perform the majority of these tasks. Normally, in a game, we would consider this typical behavior. But in this case, we've essentially been given a script to follow that we figure out how to perform as a series of puzzles. That script requires us to play a very specific role in the story, one that requires us to ruin a caretaker's garden, injure his thumb, steal his hat, frighten a small child into a phone booth, trip same small child to steal their glasses and swap them for different ones, steal an item of theirs, most obvious one being a toy that they leave unattended while playing soccer, and then force them to repurchase it from an open air shop. And several other tasks like that. Well... A lot of them just kind of remind me of a horrible childhood. Thanks, Untitled Goose Game! 
<sighs> it's been shown in various studies that your in-game avatar will affect your behavior. This has been given the name the Proteus Effect, after the Greek god that is able to change their image. But in my opinion, it seems to be just the way that priming can affect your behavior, as discussed in a previous video. You're shown an image, you are then told that this image is you, and then you are then primed to change your behaviors and attitudes to match whatever it is that you've been shown is you. It's kind of like enclosed cognition, where your attitudes adjust based on your clothing, but a little bit more. You're shown a goose. A lot of people have been exposed to the concept, a goose is an asshole. So you're subconsciously encouraged to act the way that you think an asshole goose should. But here's the key. The way that you think a goose should act, and the way that the developers think a goose should act, may be at odds. If you rather like geese and have not had nothing but good experiences with them, and or are just unfamiliar with the concept of geese being assholes, you might miss the punchline. Presumably, if you bought Untitled Goose Game based on its marketing hype, you're already on board with the idea, so that typically won't be a problem unless you're an outside of observer. As well, even if you are on board with this idea and can get on board with being an asshole goose. I mean, witnessed several people just immediately grab the sandwich at the beginning of the game, not even pay attention to see their objective list to see what they're expected to use that sandwich for, and then immediately toss it into the pond. Or just, yeah, fuck the sandwich. You're not given the space to act on what your idea of an asshole goose is. The objective structure requires you to act on the developer's idea of an asshole goose. Feel free to act like your kind of asshole goose as much as you want. You can take that sandwich, toss it in the pond, and even carry it all the way back home just to be an asshole. But if you want to see more of what the game has to offer, you have to play ball and do what it asks. Is this necessarily harmful in and of itself? No, honestly, I don't think so. We're being asked to take on a role in what amounts to a vaudevillian slapstick play. These digital beings are not real people, but digital actors on a stage. And we're asked to follow along with the script of a horrible goose that wreaks havoc throughout the town. I mean, unless you identify with the ability to act like an asshole more than finding the fun and playing the role of an asshole goose. It's in this analysis that we can see why binary morality systems that track your progress break down so much. Your actions are being judged in isolation from why you're performing them. So in order to judge them accordingly, your actions usually have to be so black and white in morality that they're almost cartoonish. Do I blow up this town with a nuclear bomb because it's a sore spot in the view of this rich guy on top of a tower? Or don't I? Do I allow survivors of a citywide lockdown access to an emergency supply drop? Or do I use my super electricity powers to claim them for myself? I've heard people ask why, if a game gives you the power to murder a whole town of people with no real consequences, would you not do that? I'd argue that's because that's not the power fantasy that I'm wanting to encourage today, and that's not the role that I want to act in the play that I'm a part of right now. Have I blown up Megaton? <laughs> to be honest, yes. Uh, when I'm explicitly focusing on saying, I'm the most horrible monster in the world, and I want this world to know it and suffer. Rather than it, that necessarily being a power fantasy that I wish to perform, it's me acting in a morality play in individual moments. You can play a person on Fallout that is judged to be morally good through the morality mechanic system, and yet justify it by saying that you're only doing it to manipulate people. And the game can't judge you for those motivations, only by your actions. In a morality play, somebody has to play the villain, but Fallout isn't giving you the space to act on that in the greater narrative of the game, only in individual moments. The game has no ability to judge you based on why you chose to blow up Megaton. It can only judge that you did it. 
The game can't know why you may have chosen to murder Burke, the man who asks you to set off the nuke. But it tells you that doing so is a universally good action based on the morality mechanics. Even if you chose to do so, because you were just in the middle of killing all the NPCs in that bar. It assumes your decision to kill Burke in cold blood is good based on what he is asking you to do, and cannot actually judge you based on your actual motives, only in what the developers assume your motives to be. Simpler games that merely give you choices and do not necessarily judge you for them through the mechanics just allow you to experience the consequences of them and justify them for yourselves often feels like a cleaner and more nuanced approach, even if they require less work to implement mechanically, just more work to implement in a writing sense. FTL, Faster Than Light, often gives you a variety of choices for how to approach situations based on your equipment, your crew, and a few basic approaches. Do you accept the surrender of a pirate ship that just attacked you? Do you only attack in self-defense? Do you try and protect those that you come across, regardless of the consequences? You're not always rewarded for what seems to be an obviously morally good choice. Frequently, the only benefit is knowledge that you did it without giving into the incentive structure in place, even at the cost of survival in the endgame. So, given all of this, what can we say about Untitled Goose Game? Hey, 8 out of 10, bit short, wish I didn't have to relentlessly bully a child in order to see the rest of the game. It's a game, like many others, with morality tracking systems. And what these morality systems ask us to do should be looked at as playing a given role. But we should also look at what that role is, determining if we're comfortable playing the role that it is asking us to play, if we're comfortable being rewarded for playing into that role um, that we're not comfortable with and we have no choice other than to stop playing the game that you spent 15 to 20 dollars on and have no ability to ask for your money back in order to not. As well, asking what the objectives attached to acting as a certain role is reinforcing. Because remember, showing a role and acting on it is reinforcing it. Man, I'm just so glad that we're just talking about video games and not about anything else where being asked to embody specific archetypes is rewarded even if you disagree with the actions you're being asked to perform so that you can survive in a capitalist hellscape and not starve to death. <laughs> huh? You know, we really should be cautious of what we say. What if somebody at the office watched this video? How would we explain that to management, talking about the horrors of capitalism? We have much to discuss. Oh shit! Hey, thanks for watching. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Special thanks to Foxy of Foxtails for playing The Connected. On October 18th through the 20th, the Surfs are going to be holding a special charity event called The Greatest Adventure That Ever Adventured. And instead of donating to me, I'd really like it if you either participated or donated to their charity of Water First. Thank you, and have a great day.